Very good morning to you, beloved. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning is 21st of December, Monday, and our theme for today is the song of joy for the Lord who will be among them. And based on the scripture, Zephaniah 3 verses 14 to 20, and Ursula Mentor and family are doing the devotion this morning. God bless you. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I bless you all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this morning, our focus scripture is in Zephaniah 3, verse 17. And I know someone's thinking, Zephahu, because I did. Um, but anyway, it's not Zechariah, you guys. It's Zephaniah, C-D-P-H. For those of us who had to search the index to find it, you will find it tucked between Haggai and Habakkuk. It's the ninth prophet um, of the minor prophets, the 12 minor prophets. Anyway, I wanted to give you just some a little bit of a um, context for the, the, the scripture. Now, Zephaniah became a prophet during the time of King Josiah, who became king at a very young age. Um, Josiah succeeded two very wicked rulers and went on to become one of the best rulers of the southern kingdom of Judah. And so this is where Zephaniah was positioned. It was at a time when the Israelites had not heard from God in 70 years. They completely turned their backs on God and were so entrenched in the ways of other nations that they were completely unrecognizable as God's people. Doesn't that just remind you of us these days? The scriptures describe that even their attire was different. The way they spoke and walked and carried themselves. They started idolizing other gods and this world that they have made their home had now become such a part of, that they have now become such a part of, had just gone completely mad. Much like what's happening with us today. You know, and I just think of the scripture that says we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Anyway, King Josiah turned the hearts of the people back to God. He expelled all idol worshipping and banished every single thing that remotely resembled the worshipping of other gods. Zephaniah was actually chosen as a prophet by God to be used in the providence of God to prepare Judah for reformation and revival under King Josiah. And the book depicts two very contrasting images of God. Firstly, it depicts this dark picture of God's judgment. And Zephaniah can be very dramatic in his description of the day of the Lord, which we know is the judgment day. And then secondly, ends the book on such a high, beautifully contrasting note that this has now become one of my most favorite passages of the Old Testament. In fact, the scripture is known by many scholars as the John 3 verse 16 of the Old Testament. You know, God so loved the world. And the scripture reads, The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. 
Hmm. God gives the instruction to Zephaniah to encourage the Israelites with his five promises. Now remember, this is a people chosen by God who time and time and time and time and time again have become rebellious, just like we do, and turn their backs um, on God every now and again. But God is so determined to let us know that he will never stop pursuing us and that he has loved us with an everlasting love that's found in Jeremiah 31 verse 3. And this scripture just brings out the character of God we serve. That this is what God wants us to know. Is that the Lord your God is with you. He is in our midst. No matter how chaotic our lives are. No matter how far we feel we, we may be from God. No matter how difficult your circumstances might be right now. We serve an ever present God. He's in the boat with you. He's in that storm with you and he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. And if you believe him, you have to believe his word. His second promise is that he is mighty to save. Oh my gosh. The word mighty in, in this context means that he has the strength, he has the will, and he has the ability to save us. So, I mean, we don't have a lot of time to, you know, to delve into it all, but I want to encourage you to go in and, and, and read the scripture and meditate over it. Um, because Deuteronomy describes God as a warrior who fights our battles for us and that we are already victorious in all battles just because... He is mighty and he is God. And you know, the, the, the word save in this context means Jehovah is salvation. It's the same word that describes the name of Jesus. Jehovah is salvation. The third promise that God makes in the scripture is that he will take great delight in you. Wow, this is where the scripture and the script just flips for me because God takes delight in me and the word delight here means God wants to please me. He wants to please you. We know from scripture that we are to take delight in the Lord. I mean, we all know the, the Proverbs verbs, the, 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 the verb from, uh, sorry, the scripture from Proverbs that says take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So we know that scripture teaches us to take delight in the Lord. But here God flips the script and he says, I will take great delight, not just delight, I will take great delight in you. I want to make you happy. I want to give you joy. I want to give you pleasure. I want to see you happy. Um, he wants to please us. This mighty God that we serve wants to please us. Us. Oh my goodness, that just, you know, I think I feel this way because I don't feel I deserve the delight that God wants to have in me. The fourth promise that he makes is that he will quiet you with his love. Now when he says, be still and know that I am God, you know, we know the verse. It's on almost every meme that goes out. It's the word that you give to people to encourage them. But I don't know if we really know what that means. Be still and know that I am God. In other words, do nothing, say nothing, go nowhere. Stay put. I am here for you. Take my peace. It is a peace that the world will never understand. But because you are mine and I am yours, I give this to you and I want you to have this. He will quiet you with his love. He will quiet your mind that runs away with you with his love. 
And then my favorite part of the scripture is he will rejoice over you with singing. I mean, the God who created the universe with a word, the God who says the world is mine and everything in it belongs to me, the God who created you and me and sustains us, this mighty God wants to rejoice over you with singing. The word rejoice in the Hebrew context means to dance, to skip, to leap, and spin around in joy. In fact, it actually means spin around under fierce emotion. That's what God wants to do for you. Doesn't it remind you of the, the, the prodigal son? I mean, we can't go into it right now, but so I'll just skip quickly to the, to the end of it, where the father waits in anticipation for his son. I mean, you know, did he know that the son was going to come back? Did he know that he was going to return? But he waited there in anticipation for this boy to come back. And when he saw him in the far distance, he ran towards his son, elated, joyful to his son. Um, and, I, and that's the feeling I get from the scripture. Is that how God feels about us? Um, because, I mean, that is exactly why Jesus told that parable, because he wants us to know how God loves us and, and the passion that God has for us. Remember Exodus 25? God says, I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God who will not share your affection with any other God. That's actually quite romantic to me. But anyway, maybe not to you. You know, I feel like God is more invested in us than what we are in him. All he wants is an intimate relationship with you to show you that he thinks about you all the time. His love for you is immeasurable and unfathomable and to such a degree that it transcends human understanding. All he wants is to be loved, cherished and adored by you and to be worshipped by you. That's all God wants from us. And just to remember that he's always looking for you. And his love, his goodness, and his mercy will relentlessly pursue you all the days of your life. Amen. Um, in the mighty name of Jesus, we all have ourselves. We all love our Jesus and our God. We thank thankful fully for them. We have safe travels, we have safe mercies, and we love each other, God. We love. Thank you, God, for this wonderful earth. Thank you, God, and Jesus. We love you, Jesus and God. We love you. And you are the only fathers in heaven. Thank you, Jesus and God. Amen. Amen. I you made the sun and placed it in the heavens I you made the mighty winds to blow and the oceans to roar I you made the universe unfurled it like a canvas Covered it with stars and signed it with my name. 
Oh, I delight in you. I sing over you with dancing. Oh, I delight in you. I will dance over you with a song. Oh, I delight in you. Highest of all my creation, I will quiet you with my love. I will delight in.